Welcome to Ham Observatory on this really glorious summer's day. In actual fact, it's the day after the summer solstice. So at the moment, the nights are, uh, well, they're clear at the moment, but very short. And they don't get fully dark here on the south coast of England. So um, I just want to, you know, add to that little introduction you saw, which puts the, the, the situation of the dome in context with the house and the garden. Uh, but also just to give you a broader view, um, as, as I'm looking uh, south here, uh, past the house, uh, about um, three quarters of a mile away is the sea. And if I look over there, I can see the Isle of Wight, uh, about five miles offshore. And um, looking north towards Chichester and the South Downs, um, seven or eight miles away in that direction there. So, so that, that shows you where we are. And also Selzy, uh, the town of Selzy, uh, on, on the peninsula that sticks out to the sea where, where we are now, uh, is about three miles away where the greatest amateur astronomer of all time, Sir Patrick Moore, uh, used to live. And uh, it, it was a privilege to, to visit him and, and to know him. Uh, I've known him for most of my life. So um, anyway, the, the purpose of the video here today is to give you um, a, a full overview of uh, a project that I've been uh, doing for a couple of years now to um, fully automate my domed observatory and also to give you a view of the actual mechanics of the observatory itself. Um, so the, the, the project um, has, you know, I've changed something recently which has made it much more uh, viable and a, a really useful tool. And uh, now the dome is capable of slewing and tracking uh, objects uh, that my telescope is imaging. And before that, uh, and the dome has been here since 2006, for, for many years, if I was doing long exposure astrophotography, then I would have to be up all night because every 20 minutes or so, I would have to give the dome a little push to make sure that the telescope was still pointing out of the shutter. And I would have to do that all night. Um, and now, you know, it's really nice to be able to set up a sequence of imaging over the night and the dome will fully uh, automatically position itself and track with the uh, telescope. And, and that's really uh, excellent. So, um, you know, as I say, I'm going to give you a, a top down view of this um, and uh, show you all the hardware inside that uh, I've built, you know, the electronics, etc. Um, I won't go into a huge amount of detail on this video. The whole idea is to show it to you, show it to you working. But for those of you that want to know more, I will make a video on the hardware in more detail and also a video about the way that the software is written. Uh, so that um, just to, to say that because it's now a, a fully fledged ASCOM compatible dome. So I'll explain how I've written the software to do that. Uh, just before we go into the dome to have a look around, i just like to add that uh, the shutter, uh, there's a two part shutter, the, the bit that slides all the way over the back of the dome there. And then this part here, which uh, is an optional part, uh, which I need to pull down if I'm looking at something a bit lower on the horizon. That is not part of the automation project. Um, it would be difficult to automate and motorize that on this dome. Um, but I will add that the ASCOM driver that I've written in the software um, will support all shutter functions. So if you do have a dome that's motorized, it will support that. And just another quick word while we're outside, just wanted to show you, there's the uh, pillar, the concrete pillar um, uh, that goes up through into the dome, as we'll see. Um, there is no uh, um, large concrete pad under here and so the airflow is very good, the temperature keeps cool and this dome, I get very good seeing in this dome because there's no large mass of concrete to store the sun's heat during the day. Okay, so let's look inside the dome. Okay, we're ducking through the door, up the little steps, little trap door there that you can shut behind you and uh, looking south out through the shutter towards the house. Okay, so let's quickly look at the structure of the dome. Uh, these fiberglass panels that are bolted together, which I made, and uh, the strength comes from this very strong uh, steel ring. And uh, the, the whole thing rides on these upturned wheels with these buffer wheels that uh, prevent the dome from falling off side to side. And um, you'll notice that uh, 
you would have noticed these mirrors which are, are used as part of the position detection system. So looking at the main components of the, uh, the dome control system. Obviously to uh, control any dome you're going to need to be able to drive it backwards and forwards and to detect the position of the dome and so that when when the telescope mount says uh, go to this particular azimuth then the dome knows where to go. So let's look at the driving first. Here's uh, a motor. This is the windscreen wiper motor which um, you can get from sort of radio spares that are quite commonly available. They've got an inbuilt gearbox and then there's a rubber wheel uh, again very easily available that I just had a bracket made for that and um, the, the motor itself is on this sort of hinged bracket uh, and this, this uh, rubber band wraps around here many times and it causes the wheel to thrust up against the uh, bottom of the metal ring and it drives by friction uh, like that. But because the ring is not exactly perfectly horizontal, uh, this, the, the rubber allows there to be a little bit of movement just in case, you know, uh, so it stops it binding or stops it from losing traction. And uh, indeed, it, it can slip a little bit, uh, especially in the winter when it's very cold or icy. Um, and uh, so it's not a good idea to use the motor shaft as a way of positioning, because if there is a slip, then of course it's going to be lose position. So that's why I've got these absolute positions uh, marked with these mirrors. And the uh, way that they're used is this... <laughs> wooden bracket here which I I intended to be a prototype to two years ago and it's still working has got four infrared uh, opto uh, photo detectors so uh, there's uh, one two three four of them here and they are little devices which I'll show in detail later where uh, the photo diode diode projects infrared out and the transistor phototransistor detects any reflection back and of course when the mirror passes here we get a signal so we get a, a it fires number one two three four and then the next one would come along and and that way the 32 mirror sections that go around the dome uh, are subdivided by four so we get an accuracy of one 128th of uh, a circle which is about uh, 2.8 degrees which is absolutely fine for uh, this application. The wiring uh, of the detectors goes through this little interface box uh, which has just got a few components in uh, which I will describe later. It just makes it more convenient to wire the system up and then eventually uh, that wire goes into the main control box. Now this control box uh, has got the Raspberry Pi microcomputer in where my code is running which is actually the dome controller and this is responsible for driving the motors and receiving all the input signals for the position. So um, the, the, these wires here are, come out and they drive the motor and uh, this little device here is again one of these, one of these things I built uh, intending it to be a test and it's still here two years later. It has a magnetic reed switch at the back and when this little magnet passes by it fires a signal and that goes down this wire and that comes into the Raspberry Pi as well. So the Raspberry Pi can read the home position that, that when that magnet is in line uh, the shutter is due south and that datums the whole thing. Um, so th this is the main control box and uh, just those wires coming out. This is a, a local area network cable. There is inbuilt wireless, so you don't strictly need that. And the only other wire is the, the mains that powers the whole thing. There is a 24 volt power supply in there that powers uh, the motors and it also powers a five volt supply that uh, powers the Raspberry Pi. So those are the main parts of the drive and the sensor uh, system. Um, I will now pan over to the telescope. Now we don't need to talk about this in a huge amount of detail but of course uh, you know it, it's, it is important because the telescope is the mount here as you can see. This is my 25 year old astrophysics uh, G900 GTO mount. Um, when that slews the telescope to the target 
uh, that we're trying to image. Um, of course, the dome needs to communicate with that and, uh, and it needs to know where it's going to go so that the telescope is looking through the shutter. Um, so this is the mount. Um, this is the telescope, which is, uh, and this whole thing is my current deep sky or one of my deep sky and, but it is my main photometry system. Um, this is a nine and a quarter inch uh, Celestron uh, SCT, Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. And there's a lot of stuff on here. Um, as you can see, um, well, let's have a look at, look at the bits. This is a, a F7 focal reducer. This is a nice uh, robotic focuser, seven position filter wheel, Starlight Express cooled CCD camera, uh, guide camera and guide scope. And the various bits of uh, electronics, the blue box there is very important because it's like the, the hub. There only needs to be one USB going from the computer, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, up to here, because this has got six USB ports on it. It's also got lots of 12 volt uh, switchable supply, uh, power supplies that power all the other bits and pieces. And it also controls the dew heater bands. Uh, on the main telescope and on the guide scope. So uh, that's the basic uh, summary of all the bits on the telescope. And moving around here, this grey box contains the actual observatory Windows computer. Uh, this is the, the one that um, it has got the software on it, uh, Sequence Generator Pro. It's got the ASCOM platform and all of the drivers that uh, that, that are needed to run all the equipment up there. And as I've said, just one USB needed to come out and some power coming out as well. And um, I talk to that wirelessly, remotely on, well, this, there's a laptop here. We don't need that laptop in the dome, but uh, I can control this from my, my office or from the house uh, when I'm setting up a schedule. So this is on the LAN, obviously, uh, the local area network, and so is the Raspberry Pi and that's how the dome controller talks to the uh, main uh, software and um, obviously I'll be talking about that in more detail on the other videos that I should be making. There's the other motor, a um, couple of other things, a little ca camera webcam so I can monitor what's going on in the dome and this is like the uh, incoming uh, local area network comes under the ground from the office in the house and uh, I've got a little switch there and the little wireless uh, access point as well. So I think that's the main structure of everything in the dome um, and in other videos I will show you, you know, circuit diagrams etc of how it actually all works and I'll also show you the electronics inside the various boxes. Okay so I thought I'd do a, an actual uh, live demo. It's actually a daytime demo, but um, I can I can do it in the daytime without uh, obviously turning a few things off. You know, I can't do things like focusing and stuff like that, but I can demonstrate the telescope slewing to targets and the dome following. So um, what you're looking at here now is I'm on my I'm on my laptop in the dome. Um, the uh, I'm, I'm looking at this computer called B-Link Dome at the top, is I'm VNCing into the uh, computer that's on in the grey box on the dome. So I'm just using the laptop to remotely access that. And I'm looking at the uh, Raspberry Pi. So, so I'm VNCing into the uh, computer uh, in the dome. And this computer in the dome is VNCing into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's a way of remotely looking at the Raspberry Pi. So this is the Raspberry Pi window here. And I've just run the Raspberry Pi software. So I booted the Raspberry Pi. The software that runs the dome driver is now running. So I'll just minimize that. That just stays like that. You just need to do that once at the beginning of an evening. And, and that's the end of that. Now I'll show you Sequence Generator Pro. What I've done is I've created a little sequence that um, hasn't got, uh, is not expecting auto guiding, not expecting focusing to work. It's just, uh, but the camera is going to be connected. And I've set up two targets that are actually in the daytime uh, at the moment. One of them is just quite close to the, um, 
to the south meridian and the other one is in the north so castor is nearly culminating at the moment and m81 is 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 obviously towards the north so i'm just going to turn on the camera and i'm going to turn on the filter wheel and i'm going to turn on the mount so i've connected to the mount and this runs up the uh little astrophysics ascom driver here um and the mount is actually uh is pointing towards the counterweight down position in the north so I minimize that and then I'm going to uh, normally you don't uh, these are the main things you connect to I'm looking at the extra things and one of them is a, a dome driver that I've selected my alpaca dome driver this is connected I've set this up so that the dome driver is now uh, available across the network and I'm going to connect so it's connected and so if we quickly sh uh, shoot back to uh, the Raspberry Pi, you can see that there's a little message saying connected. So um, we have communication and that's all working. And if you look at the bottom right of the screen, there's the ob little observatory window here. And you can see that the azimuth is currently zero. In actual fact, I've deliberately made it so that the dome is not at the home position. And what I need to do at the mo to get things datumed, I just need to press the home button. And if you look, in, obviously I've got a little video showing the dome at the same time. If, you, if I click that, um, you can see the dome moving. You can probably hear the motors whistling and it's hunting for that magnetic switch and it's found it. So, and now the azimuth is reporting 180. So that is due south. Uh, you'll notice that the observatory setting on the bottom right, it's not currently slaving, but it should set that going when I run the sequence. So when I run the sequence, let's see what happens. Click. And it's just saying that it requires auto guide is not on. That's fine. OK, so it's moved the dome a tiny amount. And that's because Castor is nearly due south and the azimuth is 174 degrees. So perhaps that wasn't the best demonstration, but we'll see a bigger slew later. And but you can see the telescope is now following on. So Sequence Generator Pro move, told the dome to move. It calculated the correct azimuth for this configuration and now the telescope is pointing through and I've set it up to take one exposure using a red filter of 10 seconds. That's what it's doing now. You can see at the bottom left integrating event one for 10 seconds and it's downloading the image. It's going to have nothing in it because I've got the cap on the telescope and now it's slewing to M81 which is obviously going to be a bit a bit longer because it's got to come round to the north. So it's interesting that um, Sequence Generator Pro uh, sets the dome moving first, which is really nice. And now the telescope has been told to move. So they sort of both get there at about the same time, which is absolutely brilliant. I mean, I have no control over that. It's just doing it. So the telescope has already got there and the dome has got a little way to go. And it still says slewing to target. So it knows that the dome is not there yet. And it's going to get there. It is. And the azimuth is 28.13 degrees. And it's now taking an image for 10 seconds of M81. And it's working very nicely. And uh, it's downloading the image. And then the sequence is ended um, and it says it's complete. Uh, you, you, you know, you just have to wait for this. I'll, I'll click the OK button to run the end of sequence. And what's what that's doing is it's um, homing. Um, yeah, parking the telescope, but it's not doing anything with the dome. The dome is just staying. There are options for me to change what happens. I could uh, home the dome at this point automatically, but the sequence is finished. The run is complete. Two images have been taken. And if I press the home button, um, what will happen is because we're at azimuth 28, it will take the shortest route home, which is the way that you can see. And the dome is homing itself. As I say, I can. There are settings I can play with to um, tell uh, you know, to, to get it to do this automatically when a sequence ends or just to leave it. It's fine. As far as I'm concerned, leaving it on um, where it finished at the end of the night is fine with me. Um, and, you know, 
what, what you have to realize is there are settings in the driver where you put in information about the physical offsets and size of the telescope and how far it is off center in the dome so that the uh, sequence generator pro software knows how to calculate the correct azimuth to compensate for the fact that the telescope is across to one side when it's slewed etc so there we go that was the demonstration i hope you found that interesting